Hello Cutters and welcome back to another devlog. I'm Tina, community manager at BBI and I'm sitting here with Heartspace Shipbreaker Design Leads who will be talking to you about the story uh, so far and everything you can expect in Act 2. Um, now uh, Elliot, uh, Shipbreaker's game director and Jenny, Shipbreaker's lead game designer will be taking over and tell you all about it. Hey, hey thanks Tina. <laughs> Hi folks. Thank you, Tina. Hi everyone. <laughs> it's been a while. It has been a while. Obviously, we've had lots to work on getting Act Two ready and uh, and out to all of you. Um, and we want to start first of all by saying thank you for all of the feedback on Act One. We took a lot of learnings from that, and we tried to incorporate all of that into um, this next rollout of campaign narrative stuff. It's been super exciting to see uh, how everyone reacted to our characters, and I know the Act 1 was more about, you know, tutorialization and us setting up our tools and all that, but it was so cool for you to finally meet our cast, <laughs> and totally. we'll do more of that in Act 2. Exactly, yeah, Act 1 was really about um, setting up the world, who you are, what you're doing here, setting up the main protagonists like Lou and Weaver, and some of the other characters, but Act 2 really dives into them more, gives those people more more chance to come to the for forefront and actually learn more about people like Didi and Kaito and what their stories are. And then we also introduce our big main antagonist, which is uh, the administrator who comes and, and sort of makes everybody's life a lot harder. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I cannot wait for people to meet Hal. <laughs> yeah. We went through a lot of iterations of what Hal would be like and look like. Um... <laughs> I, I I love where we ended up with it. Uh, it was very difficult, and we had a lot of influences. I feel like everyone has had a Hell Roads in their life at some point in their <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've all had that manager or that boss who you just be like, I don't like this person. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it would be fun to discuss a little bit more where Hell Roads sits um, compared to Calicia, right? Yeah. Uh, since we've introduced Calicia already as uh, mm -hmm. as the the right person, part of the official company head, yeah. uh, and now Hell Rhodes is like a, a different kind of antagonist. <laughs> yeah, he's the middle manager, right? He's the one who he kind of comes from the same a similar background as as a lot of the other as yourself as the cutter and a lot of the other shipbreakers that you meet. He was a part of that blue collar class and then managed to work his way up into this middle management thing and has kind of really drunk the Kool-Aid um, about links and will do essentially anything to continue to try to climb that corporate ladder. Yeah, I, I feel like a lot of our influences were about what it would be like to encounter someone who who believes that they have surpassed you and are better than you now that they are part of the quote-unquote leadership uh, group mm. and uh, are not on your rank anymore, but pretend that they are still your friend. <laughs> yeah. So like that's the the sweet spot we were trying to hit with Hell Roads. Yeah, and and in some ways you can empathize with him and what he's trying to do and what he thinks he's accomplished. Mm. And that was important to us too that he wasn't just a uh, he's not just a caricature of of evil. He's he's actually got a lot of human qualities to him and he's driven by the same sort of fears and insecurities that a, a, a lot of people are. Yeah, and the context of, of the world that all these characters exist in is to escape the blue-collar, like, oppressive work, right? So in a way, he's, at least in, in his opinion, mm -hmm. like, living the dream, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But the dream of, of escaping, uh, you know, the servitude towards a hyper-capitalist uh, place such as Lynx is not the dream that maybe he thought <laughs> or anyone totally. Totally. Like it's it's an illusion, right? And and I think uh, him tapping into that and incorporating that was very important to us. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And obviously, so so Hal's coming in because Lynx wants to clamp down on this this new sort of union activity that's starting to bubble up all over the place. And what Act Two does as well with all these other characters, Didi and Kaito, especially, is we start to see all these different sides to the struggle, different um, sort of thoughts and feelings towards it. Um, that some of them are not pro-union, some of them are maybe scared of, of what the repercussions are. It's important to us to reflect um, those types of thoughts and conversations that are happening in reality. Yeah. Our story is is a, a story about unionization, and we wanted to ensure that we reflect all complicated aspects of 
the road to unionization because it's not easy you know it's not a, a binary situation um we have a very strong voice for the union which is lou in our in our story uh and that's very important to us and she is one of our protagonists but at the same time, unionization is a complicated topic and may look different for each company and for each group that is trying to, you know, have representation of their own rights and have a say in their own futures. So we are very keen to not uh, shortcut this discussion in our in our work. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, all of that unfolds in the Act Two storyline, and um, it, it's pretty exciting, and it, it sort of culminates in in a in a really exciting way, the same one that the same way that Act One did. Um, and then eventually we'll get we'll get Act Three and the whole thing all wrap up and it's all super it's super exciting to finally see it all starting to come together. We are getting a little bit more uh, like personal stories that are not related to the main storyline from all mm -hmm. of the characters, you know, things that they only confide to you or that uh, happen between you and these people specifically. And we had a lot of fun writing, you know, really fun and bizarre stories for these totally. people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's great to finally be able to have Kaido really talk about his background and. And Dee, Dee even opens up a little bit, even though she's the one who's Hello. obviously the most, a little bit, she's the one who's most closed in out of everybody. So that was, <laughs> like Jenny said, super fun and exciting. But we also got, we got lots of other things coming too. It's not just story. We've got some big features. We've got the 3D Hab, which we've been talking about doing for such a long time now. And we had the 2D screens for so long. Um, and we knew we always wanted to turn that into a 3D space, a really cozy space for players to, to, to go to in between shifts and poke around and see all the details, learn more about the world, learn more about how Lynx treats shipbreakers, um, how they feed them. Uh, Big the questions. Laundry, yeah, yeah, what the <laughs> what the laundry situation is, like all, all that stuff, there's like little details throughout the whole thing. It's it's super exciting to see. Where do you them. live? Like where, where do does, do, does the shipbreaker actually live? There have been a lot of speculations, you know, people mm -hmm. have been speculating whether or not you live in the in the Master Jack or on the yes. station you or do not. Else. You do not live in the Master Jack. No. You're definitively <laughs> solving, solving that now. <laughs> you have a proper place to live. You don't live in the bay. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's super cool. Oh god, sorry, my cat is on my keyboard. Why right now? Cats are fine. <laughs> she wants to be here, so she's part of this now. <laughs> Um, yeah, so th thank, thank everyone who, thanks to everyone who has been part of uh, us preparing for the 3D Hub. I know it like involved um, us making some changes to the UI in preparation for that. Uh, that was very important and it was like a bit of a transition period for us. So thank you all for being part of that. <laughs> that was very important to us. Um, it will probably make a lot more sense for why we made those changes and how it looks now in the context of the 3D Hub. Yep. Um, but obviously, we are still keen to hear your feedback and see if this works for you. Um, yeah, we, we had this like transition period in between. And now it will all be revealed. <laughs> so, Jenny, I th you basically, you ran all of the 3D Hab development stuff. What what uh, was the hardest part of, of developing 3D Hab? <laughs> You're asking the hard questions right away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I think... So first of all, I I cannot wait for all of you to see this. The team has worked so hard, so hard on this. Um, you know, from from all the designers and all the artists who worked on that, uh, making it look good and work well and work with previous content and tell the right stories about the world was very important to us. Uh, and deciding what kinds of things we want to incorporate into the hub, um, like player favorites, confirm or deny some player theories, was very important to us. Um, we had a big, we had big discussions and iterations on uh, how the navigation would work in the hub because you know you are used to a first person in suit movement, but that's not quite how the hub is supposed to work. You are still supposed to move around in first person, um, but you're not in a suit anymore. So we had a lot of uh, discussions about how to solve like what the suit was, what it would be like, where, how do people talk to you now? Is there an intercom? Like how do you communicate with other people? So um, we incorporated that all in the hub and how our, our sound design works and how you can talk to your friends and the way you could receive messages and in the layout. So uh, it's partially meant to be like a cozy personal space and partially meant to be, you know, a functional cookie cutter links given uh, space that, uh, you know, is, is not meant to be luxurious or even like nice <laughs> for that yeah. matter. So we, we were trying to strike the, the balance between being given this cold corporate living space 
that you as a he real human inhabit and like what the, the amalgamation of that would look like in one space and i i'm so proud of what the team has come up with it's yeah there's a lot of love that went into that that feature yeah yeah <laughs> what, what do you say would be your favorite little detail in the pink bunny <laughs> I nice. will not say anything other than that. Just pink funny. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> so aside from the how, we've also got a new feature that we haven't really talked about. I don't think anywhere, but it, it's it's pretty cool. It's um, uh, your own personal little spacecraft. Uh, we call it the armadillo utility rig that gets given to you at the beginning of Act Two, and it's this beat up old thing. It's a classic old ship. Doesn't run. Um, and your job is to collect parts as you're salvaging and, and slowly work this thing up. Uh, and it becomes a lot more relevant in Act 3, um, and so the payoff is sort of there, but it, it's just very cool. It's like it's like fixing an old truck that you have, and um, it's, it's really exciting. So it sort of adds this extra loop and this extra bit of progression to the game um, that Jenny's also been Yeah, it, uh, it has a, a couple of, of cool knickknacks uh, for players to to look into and it will become a little bit more relevant in act three that we won't talk too much about right now but right now uh you're being given this like extra personal balance to your links corporate life uh that's is something in the progression that you work towards that is like yours and that isn't that matters to you and uh that matters to your future life beyond links hopefully <laughs> Uh, so the Amadillo ship is uh, is a really cool ship that we wanted to bring into the game for a while. Uh, you will be able to see it. <laughs> you'll be able to fix it up. Uh, you'll be able to salvage for it. Um, we're going to throw a couple of interesting choice making at you and how you develop the ship, the Amadillo ship, um, while also salvaging for Lynx. Uh, we may ask you to make some decisions on how to balance the two. <laughs> And uh, how illegal you want to be about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting dynamic to the just sort of everyday salvaging, which is pretty cool. Mm. Yes. And yeah. as always, with all these new features, we're we're looking forward to everyone's feedback on on it. Yeah, that's the one that we haven't talked much much about. So I'm I'm the most curious how people will react to uh, to that one. And uh, again, as always, tell us how how you feel and what you think. And uh, we have some some additional ideas for that particular feature but as always we would like to hear your thoughts too <laughs> finally something that belongs to you rather yeah. than links <laughs> exactly yeah. in a world where everything else belongs to links <laughs> including you including in a you, way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep so that was very important to us um i i cannot wait for you to see the amadillo ship <laughs> it's a it's a really cool ship very different from most of our other ship designs too. Mm. Cool. Yeah, we're, so we're super excited for everyone to see Act Two. Uh, and again, thanks for your feedback in the past. Please continue to give us all your feedback and thoughts and questions and suggestions, etc. Um, you might see some stuff in in going into this update that came out of community feedback. Uh, for example, we got a lot of feedback about um, repairing tools in the hab, and we've improved that flow. That's a lot better now, and that came directly out of feedback from from everyone in our community. So. We love that kind of stuff. It really helps us understand what what the game needs to be and what you guys want out of it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Yeah. And uh, we also recently had a uh, story AMA, so that was on Wednesday. That stands for Ask Me Anything on the uh, Shipbreaker Discord. So make sure to tune in if you want to participate in any other events or future AMAs and uh, be notified right away of announcements right as they come. And yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay Thanks, safe. everybody. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Can't wait to see you play. <laughs> Until next time. Bye.